Here we have a GraphQL server. We can fetch all of our episodes. We can continue to run this query as many times as we like. However, the one thing that we'd like to do in a real world application is maybe limit the amount of time that these queries or mutations can be ran. So here we can see that we are performing this query and we can also see in the headers that we're able to pass through an ID for our user in the form of an authorization header. Now you'll probably just want to use something like a GWT, decode that to get the user ID, but for the purposes of this video, we'll just use the ID of the user. Now this is a GraphQL server. We have some example users with IDs and names, we have some context for our server, and we have some simple type definitions that return a mocked list of episodes. Then we have our context function, which fetches the user from our list of users based on the authorization header that we pass. Now the one thing that we'd like to do is actually add a plugin that allows us to limit our users. Now we'll be using the plugin rate limiter from the envelope package. And this wraps a plugin that you may have heard of or used before. To get started, we'll install that plugin. Then inside of the plugins array, we'll invoke use rate limiter. This takes a few options and the first option that we'll configure will be the identify function. This function will receive the context, we'll just call this any for now, and we must return a string here that identifies the user. So you could use something like an IP from the request or we could use the context.user ID that we have set inside of our server context here. Then further on up inside of our type definitions, we're going to be using a directive approach to add directives to the queries or mutations that we want to limit. So here we can call rate limit. And then inside of here, we can pass window and we'll set this to 10 seconds. And we'll set the maximum number of requests per 10 seconds is three. Then we can leave a custom message. Next, we'll need to define that rate limit directive instead of our SDL. So here we'll call directive rate limit and we'll specify those arguments as window string max is an integer and the message is a string. And this is on a field definition. Now, if we head back to graphical and we execute this query, we can now see after we've made three queries in the 10 second window that we have an unexpected error. Now, if we change the identify value here by changing the authorization header, we can execute another query. And because this has been identified as a separate query from a separate user, we're able to perform those queries. If we change it back to one, we can continue to make requests within that 10 second window. If we change this back to two, we can see now that we have an unexpected error when we make those requests. If we change it back to one, we still get that error because we're still within that 10 second window. If we go back to two, again, we still have that error because we're still within the 10 second window. If we don't make any requests for that 10 second window, we'll be able to successfully create requests. But as soon as we reach the limit of three, on the fourth, we'll get that unexpected error. Now you're probably wondering at this point, well, why is this an unexpected error? We specified inside of our code a custom message. Now GraphQL Yoga comes with error masking enabled by default. And one way that we could enable that error is to disable the masked errors functionality of GraphQL Yoga. Now, if we run this request and we hit that rate limit, you'll see here that we get that error. But this isn't very good for security because all of our other errors from our GraphQL Yoga server will be exposed to the user. So we can remove this we can instead create a new function instead of our options for use rate limiter. So here, one of the options that we can provide is on rate limit error. We can see if we hover over event that we have some details about the actual event that occurred, we'll expose the error from the event. And instead of here, we can throw a new GraphQL yoga error and we can pass the event dot error. This GraphQL yoga error class is imported from the GraphQL yoga node package and this will allow those errors to be surfaced to the end user consuming the GraphQL API. So now with that saved, if we go back with error masking enabled by default, now when we hit that rate limit, we'll get that message. 